This is environmental microbiology, which is cross-listed between School of Plant Environmental Sciences and also biology. The class is really focused on the interactions between microorganisms and, and the environment out in the real world. So how, do, how does the environment shape what microorganisms are, are doing out in nature and how does their activities in turn affect public health and the quality of the environment? I call it baby bio because basically it works with different types of bacteria and viruses kind of strictly into the human body or in this case environmental that come into our bodies through waterways or the soils. It's an interesting class because it gets a lot of biology students from the microbiology degree who maybe don't think as often about what organisms might be doing outside of the lab and environmental science students who don't have as much maybe life science or, or cellular level biology. So the, the course actually tends to kind of focus on the interaction between those two and bringing those two groups together and really understanding both sides of that. We've got like future environmental consultants, soil scientists, certainly get pre-med, pre-dental students more on the biology side and, and some students just want to go straight on to graduate school and do research. I think it's one of the most interesting things about our field of environmental microbiology is there's, it, it's an intersection of so many other fields that it attracts people from engineering, life science, you know, pre-health, all kinds of different disciplines. I am a junior now and I am attempting to apply to vet school this fall. This major is something that interested me and fulfills a lot of the prerequisites for going to vet school. I want to go into research and I really want to go into pharmaceutical research to try to work on making drugs or trying to create different vaccines for diseases. First half of the semester we learn a few methods and then the second half of the semester they, they choose one of those methods and then they bring some samples in on their own and then they have a few lab periods where they can work on those independently and analyze them. There's certainly value in learning how to do a method and following a protocol but over the years I've just really found that I find that students don't get near as much opportunity to think through all the other parts of the scientific process and when you really go out and collect those samples you realize there's a whole bunch of little details that you have to think through in order to make sure that you're getting the data that you want to get. You know, another big aspect is that when you really do an independent project you may not get the results you expect and I've noticed in the past it's almost like some students consider that a failure on their part if they don't get what they expect to see when in reality that's what happens to us all the time in science. I am taking two different soil samples, one from soil that's in direct exposure to sunlight and then some that are in the shade. And I am trying to see if more bacteria colonies form in shade or in sunlight. I'm taking water samples from around campus and we've tested sun versus shade and looking for fecal coliforms specifically. Last week I had more bacteria in the sunlight exposed soil and then this week it was in the shaded soil. So next week's going to be, <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen next week. 